That's tough, you know, obviously not the end goal that we uh, had in mind. And, you know, to have that many turnovers or, you know, not play your best game uh, and still lose by two points is gut-wrenching. Uh, you know, we worked our ass off all year to get to that position and, you know, just to come short like that, it, it, it's never easy. What was your reaction after each turnover? Was it like, oh, no, again? Yeah, you know, uh, it's kind of like an Achilles heel. You know, Coach Moss preaches uh, protecting the football, and, you know, uh, lo you lose games because of turnovers. So uh, to get into that game, you know, everything go wrong like that, the stuff that we, the little fine details that we practiced uh, every week, uh, yeah, it's like an Achilles heel. But, you know, uh, you know, you know we're going to come back stronger from it, and, you know, it's, it's really what uh, makes the team. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, you know, uh, mindset's good, uh, recovery's been coming well, uh, you know, I've got my second operation coming up in about a month, so uh, hopefully I'll be walking after that and, you know, just slowly uh, coming back and just taking my time, but everything's been good, um, coaches, everything's been great and we're just ready to come back next year. You will be ready for training camp? Uh, yeah, uh, the goal right now is to be ready for training camp. You know, obviously, uh, I can't put a timetable on it exactly right now, but uh, definitely the goal is to be back for training camp, but definitely week one, for sure. On the game, uh, you believe that the half time that the team can uh, do two years in a row due to, to the degree condition? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, we have such a good room in there. Uh, we honestly feel like the best team is not going to the Grey Cup this year. Uh, you know, we gave them that game, and... Uh, I can tell you just the way the guys talked after the game, you know, there was no pouting or anything. It was kind of just, yeah, we're going to be back here and we're going to learn from it. I think your brother is going to be a, a RFA, a free agent. Yeah. Sorry, uh, you going to call Danny about <laughs> <it>? <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, that's something me and Danny have chatted about a little bit. Uh, obviously, at the end of the day, it's my brother's decision, uh, whatever he decides to do. But, uh, you know, two full pots always better than one. So uh, you never know. That's all I can say. Why do you need a second operation? Uh, yeah, I just got a screw in there right now, so uh, I can't walk with the screw and just don't want to uh, break it or do anything like that. So once I get that screw taken out, uh, it allows me to walk and just ensure that everything goes smoothly. Um, didn't Obviously, didn't have to get the screw put in, but did it just for my own sake and just to ensure that I'll be back next year. Est-ce que c'est dur à accepter? Comment tu passes à travers les dernières heures? Regarde, c'est sûr, c'est difficile, une game comme ça, on le souhaite jamais. Quand on, quand on domine un, un match comme ça, puis il y a cinq ou six jeux euh, qui peuvent changer le temps, c'est sûr que c'est difficile. En même temps, il euh, faut les donner le crédit, ils ont fait euh, ce qu'ils avaient à faire, euh, c'est plate. Euh, après, après de vivre ce qu'on a vécu l'année passée, c'est très dur. Mais, mais j'aimerais aussi prendre la chance de dire merci aux partisans, parce que les partisans étaient incroyables pendant le match. Le bruit qu'ils ont fait, euh, les lumières à la fin, euh, ils, ils ont cru en nous jusqu'à la fin. Puis euh, je pense que c'est quelque chose de spécial avec euh, euh, la culture qu'on est en train de bâtir ici à Montréal, pas seulement dans le vestiaire, mais aussi dans le stade. Puis euh, ça, ça c'est quelque chose euh, qui était beau à voir. Ça, je sais que ça n'a pas été facile pour toi. Bon, tu t'es blessé, euh, tu n'as pas pris part à beaucoup de matchs. Tu es rendu à 39 ans. Euh, Est-ce que tu vas être de retour l'année prochaine? Est-ce que tu as des ah. Ça, c'est des bonnes questions. Aujourd'hui, c'est vraiment la fermeture de, de 2024. Fait que, euh, je ne sauterai pas dans ça tout de suite. Ça, c'est des, des, des décisions de famille. Euh, fait que, ça, c'est des choses qu'on va en parler, discuter euh, prochainement, c'est sûr. Euh, vous, vous allez être les premiers à savoir quand ça va être le temps. Euh, mais honnêtement, aujourd'hui, c'était vraiment, tu sais, hier, aujourd'hui, c'était vraiment de prendre le temps avec nos coéquipiers. T'sais, on est un vestiaire, euh, on est tous des chums, on s'aime beaucoup, euh, on aime se jouer au football ensemble. Et puis juste de, de voir tout le monde ensemble en même temps pour un, euh, le, le dernier réunion qu'on a eu aujourd'hui, euh, parce que ça ne sera pas la même équipe l'année prochaine. Il va y avoir des gars qui vont partir, il va y avoir des nouveaux qui vont s'ajouter. Fait que euh, euh, aujourd'hui, c'est fermeture de 2024, puis euh, ces choses-là, on va passer quand c'est le temps. Ouais, étant donné que tu n'as pas joué beaucoup, tu as peut-être une perspective différente, mm -hmm. étant donné que tu faisais partie de l'équipe, mais tu avais un peu de recul. Le fait que ça n'a pas bien été en deuxième moitié de saison comparativement à l'année dernière, à quel point tu penses peut-être que c'est lié avec la performance le samedi? C'est dur à la regarder peut-être. À l'interne, on le voit d'une façon, puis à l'externe, on, on le voit d'une autre façon. Mais moi, je voyais qu'on jouait du bon football. C'était juste, tu sais, des, des fois, on dit la malchance, des fois. Parce qu'on a vu contre Winnipeg, tu sais, on a bien joué. On a recommencé à jouer comme qu'on jouait au début de l'année. Et puis, ce game-là, comme j'ai dit, si on la regarde... Tout sauf cinq jeux ou les revirements, je trouve qu'on a quand même dominé. Ce n'est pas, euh, pas comme si on a mal joué puis, euh, au complet puis on s'est fait déclasser sur le terrain. C'était vraiment juste les revirements. C'est quelque chose que pendant la saison, je pense qu'on était la deuxième équipe dans la Ligue pour le ratio euh, revirement. Fait que, 
cette année, pour moi, c'était une chance de voir un petit peu plus de comment ça se passe de l'autre bord. Quand on en regarde dans les bureaux, on en regarde euh, les plans de jeu, euh, prendre le temps d'apprendre. Oui, oui, je suis vieux, je suis vétéran, euh, mais en même temps, je n'ai jamais vraiment peut-être pris le temps de, de vraiment regarder la façon qu'on prépare pour les matchs, euh, le, le plan de match euh, avec les coachs. Alors, j'ai eu la chance de d'apprendre beaucoup cette année et puis euh, je vais sortir de cette année encore beaucoup plus intelligent avec le football que je l'étais. C'est quelque chose qui t'intéresserait la journée où tu décideras d'arrêter le football, de continuer dans un autre rôle? C'est sûr que euh, <rire> moi j'ai commencé à jouer au football, j'avais 8-9 ans, j'ai 39 ans, fait que pour moi c'est quelque chose que je ne vais jamais partir euh, du football, euh, peu importe euh, quel niveau, on, on verra quand c'est le temps, euh, mais c'est quelque chose que je vais toujours vouloir in être impliqué avec le football, c'est un sport exceptionnel. Pour moi c'est le football c'est différent que tous les autres sports. Le hockey, tu peux jouer quatre matchs, tu sais, c'est quatre sur sept. Tu, baseball, c'est la même chose. Basketball, c'est la même chose, mais football, c'est « one and you're done ». Fait que, tu sais, c'est quelque chose qui est différent avec le football. C'est extrêmement… il y a beaucoup de, de pression euh, et puis il euh, faut exécuter ce match-là. Fait que c'est quelque chose de spécial puis euh, je vais toujours vouloir rester proche du football. Les gars, justement, depuis deux semaines, on jasait à tout le monde. Tout le monde avait l'air super confiant pour mm -hmm. le match de ce week-end. Est-ce que cette défaite-là, ça vous laisse un peu en tant qu'équipe sur votre fin? C'est la fin de 2024, c'est sûr, euh, mais c'est quelque chose que, comme je dis, on ne s'attendait pas à ça du tout. On était confiants. On savait qu'on était capable d'avoir de, de, du succès ce match-là. C'est juste que ça n'a pas bien tombé. Des fois, on dit, euh, on a des expressions en anglais, en anglais de football gods, des affaires comme ça. Euh, Puis évidemment, c'est comme ça que ça s'est passé. Euh, oui, on est fâché. Oui, c'était un, un coup crève-cœur, mais en même temps, il euh, faut être capable de bâtir, il faut être capable de grandir, il faut être capable de passer à travers ces moments-là. Et puis moi, je vois les gars déjà euh, qui vont être prêts pour euh, la saison morte. Ils vont travailler encore plus fort. Le feu, euh, il va être encore plus gros cette année euh, pendant l'off-season. Puis euh, je pense que les Alouettes vont revenir en force l'année prochaine. You're uh, 39. 39 yes. years old. Yes, I am, Herb. Uh, Calvillo played till he was 40, so you're a kid. Do you still have the desire to play? <laughs> I mean, passion for football is something that'll that'll never go away. Uh, kind of like I just said, you know, I, I've been playing football for over 30 years now. I've been involved in football, and it's something I'm always going to be passionate about. So I'm always going to have the fire uh, to be around football. Uh, now, what capacity that'll be in in the in the future, uh, we don't know. Is the future being planned now? Not yet. Today, like I've said, uh, and the French version was 2024 is closing today. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, but I'm always going to be passionate for football, uh, whether it's as a player, whether it's as something else. Um, I'm just looking forward to what my family and I will decide in the coming weeks to see how we're going to go and transition with that. Are you that. under contract? No, I am not, no. You need an agent? <laughs> no, I'm my, I'm my own agent. I'm good, Herb, thanks. I've been doing it for years. <laughs> It's definitely one that got away. Uh, we were very confident coming into this game. Uh, we knew we had a good plan. We had two weeks to prepare. And if you watch the majority of the game, we were, we were pretty dominant in most of the phases. Uh, they had some good plays too. Obviously, you can't take away credit from them. But I think we really gave it away. You know, it's one of those things where mistakes happened. You know, dropping the ball, uh, turnovers. It's not something we did all year long. It's something we were actually very. It's something we have to take a lot of pride in. We talk. We talk about chinning the ball, not turning it over. And I think we were. Uh, second in the team uh, for uh, turnover margins. So that goes to show you all year we were good with the ball. And this was just one of those cases where uh, the football gods said something else and we made too many mistakes and it was the mistakes when it mattered. And you have to give them credit. They did their job. They're the ones going on. So so this one hurts and it's going to sting. But at the same time, it's going to be the motivation to come back next year even stronger and maybe never take the foot off the gas, right? You gotta, you gotta keep going whether you clinch early, whether you don't, you gotta keep going all the way till the end. And I know that's the kind of guys we have in our locker Are room. Are you suggesting that this team took its foot off the gas? Nope, I'm not saying that we took the foot off the gas. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is maybe just come maybe with more of a fire, a bigger fire in okay. your belly ready to go. It sounded like you're suggesting that maybe this team took its foot off the gas. It might, it might, maybe I phrased that wrong then, the way you say it, but no, it's really maybe you more, said, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it's one of those things where I think we're just going to be more hungry, right? So we learned last year 
how amazing it is to be at the top, be at, be, uh, at the peak of performance, being the champions. Um, we actually had the chance to have George St. Pierre come here uh, a couple weeks ago. And, you know, he told us a bit about his story of how he got to the top. And when you're at the top, everyone wants a piece. And then uh, he ended up losing it, but then getting it back again. But never to lose sight of that goal, right? So for us, I think this is going to be a learning experience for us to maybe have that fire be even stronger because we know how, how much it hurts after knowing we could go further. Um, a lot of people might say um, that the best teams are not going there next week. Some people will say uh, we should be there, but that's not the reality of it, right? So this year, the best two teams is not what we're a part of. So we want to get back to what we were last year. And so when I say put your foot on the gas mm -hmm. nonstop, it means have that killer instinct every minute, every day, not just in games, but during practice, during the off-season preparation, don't take a day off and come back ready to, to go to war. And you'd like to be part of that. <laughs> <laughs> Football's an incredible game, Herb. Everyone wants to be a part of it all the time. J'ai juste une dernière à la position de corps arrière. Il y a un contexte intéressant. Davis Alexander pourrait chercher un emploi ailleurs. Cody, il reste une saison. Comment tu vois un peu la situation? Ça, c'est une très bonne question. Ça, c'est des choses que je suis chanceux. Je ne suis pas euh, dans une position à, à prendre des, des décisions comme ça. Euh, on a été choyés cette année avec les gars qui, qui ont rentré. Même, on avait Caleb aussi qui était sur le roster, qui est rentré pour, pour nous aider quand Cody s'est blessé. Puis le Davis... T'sais, il n'est pas venu de nulle part. On savait il y a, a beaucoup de talent. Alors, pour nous autres, de voir un gars comme ça avoir sa chance de jouer, je pense qu'il a joué trois ou quatre matchs, puis je pense qu'il a, a été euh, euh, sans défaite. Il a, il a gagné tous ses matchs. Puis il y avait un petit peu de magie aussi. Puis il y a un canon. Il est capable de lancer le ballon extrêmement loin. Fait que c'est sûr que quand on a des jeunes qui montent, T'sais, ça met de la pression peut-être sur ceux qui sont les vétérans sur l'équipe, mais en même temps, ce, ce, cet esprit de compétition, je pense que ça l'améliore euh, l'équipe au complet. Puis pour les carrières, je pense que ça l'a aidé Cody aussi à peut-être euh, pousser un petit peu plus fort aussi. Fait que ça, euh, comme je dis, c'est une, <rire> une bonne question. Euh, moi, je vois que du bon dans une situation comme ça. Et puis, euh, je souhaite euh, que l'équipe soit capable de les garder les deux, c'est sûr. Et puis, euh, j'espère voir quelque chose de bon de les deux l'année prochaine. Oh yeah, uh, it's, it's probably going to be a long one. Um, you know, I'm sure. You know, I'm going to talk to Coach Moss. I'll talk to Danny, and I'll be talking to Cody too. Honestly, um, you know, we'll, you know, it's obviously in their hands. It's not in our hands at all. So um, just just see where it goes. Are you prepared to come back if you're not the starting quarterback? Am I prepared to come back? Considering that you're a potential free agent. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, obviously just going to depend on every other situation, right? Um, see what the league looks like. But, um, I mean, I do love it here. Um, <coughs> I love the coaches. I love the organization. Um, but, of course, it still has to make sense to me uh, and my family and all that. But, um Some, you know, maybe it works out that way where I'm not the starter and I do come back. I'm not sure. I'm not going to rule out any anything. So you do feel like you're sorry. <laughs> you do feel like you're ready to be the starter and you prove that you're a starting quarterback in this league. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm always going to for sure bet on myself and um, believe in myself. Um, and you know, I, I would have told you my rookie year I could be a starting quarterback. Um, Do you That's think the league will find you when you say that you're betting on yourself? <laughs> Let's not put that in the air. Let's not put that in the air. Hopefully not. Um, I would. There's a new commissioner, so maybe it's okay. Yeah, hopefully. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I. Like I said, I would tell you I could have been a starter my rookie year. Obviously, I couldn't have been, but I would. That's kind of the mentality I have. Yeah, I mean, I, it was a it was really a crazy year. Um, uh, I truly am very proud of myself. Um, you know, everything that I went through. Um, you know, it was, it's weird because it was like some of the best moments of my life with you know the worst combined with the worst moment of my life. And um, so, and as far as that, I'm very proud of myself. I'm proud of 
how I carry myself. I'm proud of uh, earning my teammates, coaches, organization, uh, the league's respect. Um, but like I said, I'm going to always believe in myself. And um, I could have told you that I was going to have a great year, even you know, if I just got the opportunity. So you're not going to like this, but would the uh, team be going to Vancouver today if you were <laughs> started voted? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, no when you, if you have, if you tell me you have five fumbles or whatever, yeah. five turnovers, uh, pick six, punt return for a touchdown, and we lose by two. I think Tyson already said it, but yeah, we believe the <laughs> the best team's not going to Vancouver. Um, yeah. Euh, toujours difficile à accepter, mais il y a un point qui est simple. Tu fais cinq turnovers, tu ne te donnes pas des bonnes chances pour gagner. Puis je pense que c'était vraiment ça. Là. Euh, on s'est tiré dans le pied, puis après ça, il faut, euh, faut vivre avec les conséquences. T'sais, le football, c'est une question d'exécution, puis à des moments clés, on n'a pas exécuté. Juste, tu peux être la meilleure équipe sur le terrain. Si tu n'exécutes pas, puis tu fais des erreurs. On a fait plus d'erreurs que les autres, puis ça a coûté, ça a coûté le match. Est-ce que tu as revu le match, puis euh, de quelle manière tu penses que cette partie-là va faire grandir l'équipe, puis peut-être même toi aussi, là, personnellement? Um, ça va faire grandir. C'est sûr que ça va faire grandir. Tu apprends euh, beaucoup plus des défaites euh, que des victoires, puis on a appris énormément cette journée-là. Puis, a... la réalité, c'est qu'il n'y a pas eu une lacune au niveau du. Euh, euh, je pense au niveau des, des, des revirements dans les, comme culture au niveau de l'équipe. C'était quelque chose que tous les jours, tous les jours A, le jour 1, Jason Moss faisait appel au 12 La bataille des, des revirements, comment c'était important. Toute la semaine, il nous a parlé. Ce n'est pas été vraiment quelque chose qu'à la fin de la saison, tu peux faire. Ah, oh, tu sais quoi, on n'en a pas assez parlé. On n'a pas assez parlé de ça, on n'a pas assez mis l'emphase. C'était l'emphase toutes les semaines. Mais tu peux faire autant d'emphase que tu veux. C'est quand le temps d'exécuter, si tu n'exécutes pas, ça va donner un match comme celui-là. Mais à quel point, tu la, la semaine de congé, est-ce que ça a été un facteur, tu de passer deux semaines sans se faire frapper? Euh... Non, parce que si tu regardes les pratiques, on a frappé nos joueurs. il y a des, des vidéos où est-ce qu'on a créé des… Tu sais, on a… On, 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 tu sais, on a hatchet, là, on frappait pour le ballon. Pour vrai, je dirais pas que le résultat du match est à cause de la, de la semaine de congé. C'est vraiment… Euh, une question d'exécution de des affaires banales, de le momentum qui change de bord, qui revient de notre côté, les échappements du ballon, une interception autour dans le match. Tu sais, c'est des affaires que, quand tu dis tu te tires dans le pied, c'est vraiment ça. Mm -hmm. Puis c'est là que c'est, OK, tu, tu retournes avec un recul, est-ce qu'on n'en a pas assez parlé? Est-ce qu'on n'a pas assez mis d'emphase? Puis tu fais, mais non, toute la semaine, on a parlé de ça. Fait que c'est ça qui est dur à avaler parce que tu as l'équipe, mais c'est tellement la réalité du sport, il faut que tu exécutes. Tu peux tout savoir, tu peux avoir tous les beaux discours, tu peux... mais si tu n'exécutes pas la journée, ça va donner un match comme celui-là, puis c'est ça qui est arrivé. Marc-Antoine, bon, vous avez beaucoup de préparation justement dans les deux dernières semaines, comme tu le disais. Est-ce que tu penses qu'à un certain moment, l'équipe était peut-être trop confiante en vue de ce match-là? Non, ça, ça n'a jamais été un problème d'être trop confiant. On l'a vécu l'année passée. On dit l'équipe qui, qui a affronté une équipe trop confiante. <rire> Ça n'a vraiment pas été un problème où est-ce qu'on était trop confiant, où est-ce qu'on on, on pensait déjà à la Coupe Gouille. On savait exactement que c'était cette étape-là qu'il fallait franchir. Puis on n'a juste pas réussi à la franchir. Puis c'est difficile parce que, tu sais, c'est tellement des questions de détails. C'est un sport tellement minime. Puis tu regardes avec toutes les heures qu'on a faites, puis on reste quand même à deux points. On reste quand même à des jeux. Puis certains jeux clés qui sont faits, c'est ça qui, qui est difficile parce qu'après ça, quand tu fais vraiment l'analyse du match, il y a plein de jeux que tu peux aller voir et te dire, hey, si on avait fait ça, si on aurait fait ça. C'est comme c'est une danse un peu, la, la game de football. Puis on n'a on a pas réussi à suivre cette danse-là. Puis on avait des chances de revenir dedans, mais on n'a juste pas été capable de capitaliser. Puis tu sais, à la fin, c'est c'est pas comme une game où est-ce que, par exemple, en 2022, c'est comme, OK, on n'était vraiment pas la meilleure équipe. Puis on s'est fait battre. Là, c'était c'est l'inverse, puis c'est là que c'est ça que je disais qui était dur à avaler, en sachant que on avait tous les outils pour se rendre, mais on les a mal utilisés.
C'est ça, si tu commets 5 revirements et que tu, fais, tu te fais battre par 38 points, mais là, 5 revirements puis vous perdez juste par 2 points, c'est ça qui fait le plus mal, dans le fond? Ah, ben ça fait... Tu sais, tout se fait mal, mais c'est qu'on a 2 points aussi. Tu sais, on a fait 5 <coughs> revirements des moments clés où est-ce qu'on est dans la zone pour soit faire un toucher ou faire un 3 points. Puis, à, des, à la fin de la demi, je pense que c'est 14 points en même pas une minute, si je me trompe une pas. Une minute et demie. Une minute et demie. Puis, même à ça, on revient dans le match après. Tu sais, comme tous les, les swings de momentum qui peuvent partir d'un bord à l'autre. Tu sais, quand tu commences le match avec un pick six, puis on est capable de revenir dedans. Fait que c'est là que c'était. On n'a jamais senti que. C'est comme on, a une, on saute en parachute, mais a, on se tire nous-mêmes des trous dans notre parachute. <rire> tu sais, c'était vraiment ça. Puis. C'est ça qui, 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 qui est tough, mais on va apprendre, on va énormément apprendre de celle-là. Puis en fin de rencontre, qu'est-ce qui est arrivé pour permettre aux Argos de compléter quelques jeux qui ont été importants pour écouler le, le temps au cadre? Bien, défensivement, il faut faire un arrêt. T'sais, on est deuxième et long. La passe qui est faite dans le milieu, que Arbuckle faut que je donne, c'était une passe assez bien précise. Quelque chose de, que ça peut arriver, mais après ça, tu la passe sur euh, le corner out, je veux dire. C'est une passe qui est en anglais « on the throne », qui crée la collision pour le flag. Ce n'est pas, pas été comme la passe de Kelly qui a fait euh, euh, quand on l'a euh, piné dans la ligne des buts. Puis il a fait euh, le mot 3 de Grant, là, je pense. Là. Ouais. Puis il a fait la passe incroyable. Tu sais, c'est comme Ça, c'était juste une mauvaise passe. Puis c'est un contact qui crée un flag parce que sinon, ça va en 3. Tu sais, c'est deux jeux. T'sais, ça reste ces deux jeux importants, ces deux jeux qu'on va se rappeler, mais c'était des jeux qui sont arrivés malheureusement, puis ça va arriver, ces jeux-là, c'est juste que ce n'est pas le bon moment pour que ça arrive. T'sais. Quand c'est le temps d'arrêter, il faut arrêter la balle. Comment ça se sentir de clear votre locker aujourd'hui, après la saison que vous avez eu, et dans les hopes que vous avez eu? C'est toujours facile de clear le locker. Ce n'est jamais un moment que tu veux expérimenter, tu veux que chaque joueur, chaque équipe veut expérimenter le Grey Cup. And this year, it just makes you realize that nothing's for granted, and it's not an easy thing. So, it, it's part of football. You know, it's uh, something that you're going to learn from. When you zoom out, do you, how do you feel about the situation overall with the franchise, though? Because I mean, three years ago, to be even considered as a favorite for uh, winning the Great Cup would have seemed like a bit of a long shot. I mean, just how do you, how do you feel about this? Well, uh, overall, if you look at that franchise, we're going in the right direction. But there's something we need to correct. And but if you look at the bigger pic, look at the bigger picture. I think we're on the right path. There's the some right element right now, and we just gotta execute some of the thing and work a little bit harder on some of the other thing. But I feel like, you know, yes, it's a, you know, it's not a, the result that we want. But there's still something to work on from that and go uh, go for it in the future. Sorry. On the Argos' last series against an inexperienced quarterback who hadn't played much this year, I think the team only rushed three players. You completed a pass to Ungerer, and then, of course, there was the pass interference penalty against Beverett. Are you surprised that you only rushed three? Are you surprised by that call? Well, no. I mean, they're going to try to throw the ball, you know? And you want to make an unexperienced quarterback trying to find. But maybe you want to sack the guy that hasn't played much too. Yeah, well, or you know, there's there's context also. You know, we call in play calling at that point. But you get a three man rush. You got an experienced quarterback. Pressure is on. Three man rush. He's probably going to see us five. You know, he got to now find the pocket. You know, so. Well, then maybe you should only rushed one and had eleven back. Well, that's, so he doesn't complete a pass. Yeah, but that's not the same thing. Okay. I mean, look, if you want to go into the play calling, you can go and ask with uh, the coaches. But if you look at what you had, there's a situation where you can put pressure in this situation where you can just three and rush. And so we can get to the carpet back sometime in three and rushes. You know, there's a look. You look like you're rushing five, but you drop it. You drop in your three-man rushes. But, you know, I'm not here talking about what the call was and how it should have gone, you know. It's easy. It's super easy when the game is over, looking back at the tape and saying, ah, oh, this is what you should have called. Si demain matin, tu te réveillais dans les, dans les souliers du directeur général des Alouettes, ça serait quoi ta priorité pour la cette prochaine saison-là? Oh mon Dieu, ben, 
j'ai pas à faire ça, fait que... <rire> Honnêtement, je sais... Non, c'est pas... C'est pas quelque chose que je me concerne là-dessus. So, one of the sen sentiments expressed today is that, by the players, understandably, is that the best team is not going to the Grey Cup. Uh, the Argos could have said the same thing last season when they were 16 and 2. The best teams win games when their seasons are on the line. Uh, I think winning doesn't reward hard work, talent. It's just that's what makes this sport so incredibly special. And I think that's why a lot of people gravitate towards this sport is because uh, it's anyone's team any given day. And it's one game. It's not like uh, other sports where you have a series. And if you don't show up for one game, then you might be able to catch them two, game two, game three, game four. Uh, you have to show up. And for us, uh, I thought we showed up. I just thought we did a terrible job of protecting the football. And they did a great job of uh, attacking the football when they were on defense. And uh, that obviously was the difference in the game. But like I told you guys after the, after the game, uh, it, it showed how talented this team was because I believe any other team in this league turns the ball over as many times as we did. They lose by 20, they lose by 30. And we had a chance to tie it there at the end of the game and really go into overtime. You were 10 and one at some point, at one point, and then you only won two games. Do you think this team peaked too early? No, I don't think so. I, you always have to manage the end of the year. And when you clinch uh, so early, I think that's a blessing and a curse um, because you want to be the hottest team in the league at the, at the right time. And both years I've been on Grey Cup winning teams, uh, I, we, were on the, we were the hottest team in the league. And so there's something to be said about, about momentum. And, mm -hmm. uh, but when you have a first round bye, it doesn't matter if, like I said, going into that game, it didn't matter if we were on a five game winning streak, we were gonna have a first round bye anyways. And that's gonna take momentum out of your sales. Uh, one play can dictate the difference in, in momentum and can build you momentum or could take momentum away. Uh, but this, this game is so built on momentum that uh, you want it on your side. And uh, I don't think this team peaked too soon. I think we lost some very talented players to injuries uh, throughout the year. Uh, Phil Potts, one that comes to mind. Mustafa Johnson, another guy that comes to mind. Uh, starting quarterback comes to mind. Yeah, you know, honestly, and for me, I felt like I was having an MOP season throughout the first five games. And uh, when you lose rhythm and you, you don't feel like you're in that rhythm or that state, and there was so much confidence for me rolling over from winning a Grey Cup into this year. And uh, I thought I was playing the best ball of my career. And, and then you get an injury and it kind of takes the wind out of your sails. But uh, yeah, like I said, losing, losing Philpot, losing Mustafa, losing Lemon uh, with the suspension thing, that's a, that's a pass rusher that's got 100 sacks under his belt and sure would have loved to have him in that East final game where you, he can find a way to change the game. So uh, I think we were just on the unfortunate side of some injury bugs uh, and that kind of took some wind out of our sails. But uh, we just didn't accomplish what we needed to do in the East final, even though we, we felt we were the more talented team. So what happened, what changed with your game after the injury? Uh, honestly, I, I felt like it was, uh, so up and down because when I came back from injury, uh, I believe we played Edmonton, then we went straight into a bye week. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we, we came back and I believe we played two games. Uh, and I end up, I can tell you guys now, I end up breaking two ribs uh, in the Ottawa game. Uh, so then I, I played through I that. Something was up when you were holding your side and I asked you about that. Yeah, I, you know, you don't want to tell people at the time because then people are going to go for your ribs. Um, I, but, I'm uh, in no position to go for your ribs. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so so that Ottawa game, I end up breaking two ribs. I played Toronto the next week, and then I went home for the bye, and I was home for three weeks with my family. Gave me enough time to, to let my hip, ribs heal, but you just get out of rhythm. And so I think it might be a little bit different in terms of my play down the stretch uh, if I was able to play week in and week out, and I was 100% healthy. Um, but it was towards the end of the year, and it's hard to be healthy for 18 games. But to tell you the truth, I. I was really proud of the way that um, I completed the ball this year and my turnovers. Uh, I led the league in the least amount of turnovers per attempt, and I led the league in most completions, uh, completion percentage. And those two things equate to winning football, and I've seen it. And I feel like I'm playing the best ball in my career, even though people might think otherwise. Uh, and I'm excited, and you know, a lot of things can change in the CFL moving forward. But I'm excited to have at least another opportunity to uh, kind of right your wrongs the next year. So, what do you think you showed on Saturday? in terms of moving forward and going into next season? Yeah, I thought I showed toughness. I thought I showed mental toughness as well. Um, uh, I, I thought the guys rallied around me and, and rallied around the offense. But, um, 
you know, I thought we played offensively. We played well enough to win the football game. We just turned the ball over four times in their end of the field, and that's 12 points, 12 point swing, and an unfortunate pick six that goes off of uh, Fletch's hands that gifts them seven points. And so, and then we have two failed two point converts. So, if you want to add up all those points there, you know, you're somewhere around 28, 30 points, and it, that's why I think these guys feel like the better team was unfortunately uh, on the losing side of it because uh, that's how the game played out. But like I said, it's a it's a one game thing. They they found a way to take the ball away, and we found a way not to protect it. You you would have met with Machocha today. I did meet with Danny. Yes. Did he tell you that you were the starting quarterback moving forward? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, there's a lot of things that have to work out in the off season, and obviously you uh, you have a let's call it a, a little bit older quarterback and you have a young quarterback and you have a young quarterback who played well. Um, so we've had our conversations, no, no decisions have been made and uh, a lot of things can pan out over the next, you know, couple of days. And, uh, but the, the good news is, uh, they know I want to be here, and I, I expressed my feelings, how I want to be the quarterback for this organization and how I feel like I can still play at a talented level enough to win us a Grey Cup and grind for that ninth Grey Cup. And so they know how I feel about here, and uh, it's just what what they decide to do and talking with, with all parties. And would, would you be willing to restructure – I'm sorry to hog this. Would you be willing to restructure your contract if it meant that they could get both you and Alexander back? I think – you know, for me, I just want to be a part of a, a great cup winning team. And it depends, obviously, what those figures look like because I have to look out for myself and my family. Uh, and also, you want to be on a team where you know you're going to be the guy and you don't feel like uh, if you play bad in one game, all of a sudden you're not going to be that guy. And, and I've been a part of that situation in the, my last year in Sask. And it's extremely difficult for anybody to play in that situation where you feel like you're afraid to make a mistake. So um, sometimes having two incredibly talented quarterbacks is is, is not a good thing because uh, it divides people, it divides fans, it divides guys in your locker room, it divides coaches. Uh, so sometimes that's not the best best formula for it. And I have all the faith in Coach Moss and in Danny and, and them making the right decision. Whatever decision that means, um, I'm, I'm fully committed to playing a, another year. Uh, like I said, I want to be back here. Uh, I want to retire as an Alouette. I want to bring another great cup to this wonderful city. Um, and I just hope I have that opportunity to do that. Did he ask you to restructure? Not yet. So do you think that Davis won't be back next season? It's a question for him. I know you guys already had him, and I hope you asked him the same hard-hitting questions <laughs> you guys are asking me. But uh, There's only one guy asking. All I know, all I know is uh, his market value is extremely high right now. A guy came in and played extremely well, and in a year where backups had to play a lot of games, and uh, in my personal opinion, I thought he played the best out of all the backups. Right. So there's going to be some franchises that are going to need a quarterback every single year. Some franchises are, franchises are going to need a quarterback, and so it's just whether he wants to take it to free agency or if he wants to uh, commit here and, and that's what you have to kind of ask yourself and sometimes the grass isn't always greener on the other side for me the grass was greener on the other side when I came from over from Sask uh, but uh, it's not always uh, not always true given the opportunity Last one for you guys had this year just how difficult was it to sort of put a bow on every today and then clean out your lockers uh, it's the worst feeling in, in pro football or pro sports when you walk into the locker room and you see a trash bag sitting in your locker and you got to clean it out and you don't know what your future holds. And so uh, it's tough because last last year you when you win a cup with guys, the bonds and relationships you build are, are forever. And the guys in this locker room that we had, there, there's a lot of guys that are, are going to walk away from the game or not going to be teammates next year. And so there's a lot of uncertainty and uh, it just hurts. And it, it just hurts your heart knowing that you don't have that same opportunity to win a championship with guys that you bled with, you sweated with, you cried with. Uh, and so it, it's just one of those years where it just didn't go our way at the end of the year. But that's not to take away from what this team did. This this team did a lot of incredible things over the course of the year. Yeah, we didn't finish with hoisting the Grey Cup over our head, but uh, talking about the away game win streak and the amount of games we won in a row, it's like there's a lot of things that are going to be overlooked because we didn't win that last game of the year. But this team was incredibly talented, and we did a lot of things and broke a lot of ground uh, in the CFL and, and letting the CFL know that Montreal Alouettes football is back. And anytime that you're going to play the Montreal Alouettes, you're coming to to get a four-quarter game, very physical game, and uh, Montreal football is back for sure. I mean, definitely, uh, you know, it's not, a, it's not a good feeling today. We're supposed to be on a flight to VC. Uh, so, uh, you know, just taking it in for what it is. And, uh, 
you know, cleaning, going through the film and just putting together a good game plan here for the offseason. Going back to the end of the season, do you feel you had enough time to pick up rhythm before the playoffs? Uh, speaking to myself directly, uh, for myself, absolutely. Uh, I felt like I was playing really good football. Uh, I felt like the, uh, what I put on film for our last game uh, was was an elite, elite performance. In your opinion, what did that team learn this year? What did the team learn? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the biggest thing that we're going to learn, uh, honestly, from uh, just this experience is, uh, you know, uh, not taking anything for granted, uh, you know, not being complacent. And uh, regardless of what we did in the season, you know, you got to prove it in, in the playoffs. And so um, the details, man, the details is, is what's very important, especially uh, when you talk about the game of football. The game of football is, is about a, a football, and we got to take care of the football. And that's the number one thing. And that's going to be a big detail. I know moving forward, we're going to grow from and uh, I really look forward to it. You feel that, that there was some complaints? Um, <clears throat> you know, I mean, if you're if you're locked in the way that we, we talked about being locked in, uh, you know, there's a lot of things I think don't happen in that football game. Um, as professional athletes, I think there's definitely we got to take some accountability and we got to look ourselves in the mirror and uh, make sure that you know, in, in big games and big situations, uh, you know, stuff like that doesn't happen. Does it hurt more because you haven't been? blown out with the five turnovers and that it ends only by a two-point margin? Nah, I mean, a loss is a loss regardless. Um, no matter how, how much we lost by or how little, um, we still lost. You have a lot of preparation since the last two weeks. Do you think as a team you were too confident to attempt this game? Confident? No, no, no. Like I said, just a second ago, um, I think it comes down to ourselves. Um, um, everything Uh, if you guys look on the uh, watch the film, I think there's five plays uh, that was, you know, it, it dictated to us that you know, if we hold on to the football, we're in a whole different situation. You talked about the city of Montreal and the love you felt you know, on social media. So maybe can you talk about uh, about like the way you have adapted to the city and the city has embraced you in a sense? No doubt. I mean, I've, I've you know I've always been really interested in, in the history of Montreal and, and coming into this league and uh, you know being one of the you know top players. What, what was it like before? And I saw what it was like. And guys were telling me this was a, the retiring place for a lot of players in the CFO. There was five, 6,000 fans in the, in the stands. And to see that what we've done here um, in Montreal and, and the culture change that we've done, I mean, it's tremendous. And, and to know that these fans have our back, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. And, you know, I, I want to win that game just as much, you know, for the guys, that are, the fans that are watching. And so I take a great pride in that. And um, we got to do better. And so that's just plain and simple. Merci à tous. Merci, guys. Merci beaucoup.